Hey guys, what's up? This is Coffee Chug and I'm here today. I'm talking about this right here. Bird Brain Technologies and something that's going to be coming your way that's going to be a game changer. Something that I love. I've had some time to ex explore and, and, and check out to get a chance to do some workshops with. And I'd like to introduce you. Let me go dive down here into my per my little, I always call it a purse, into my apron. All right, not a purse. Nothing, nothing against the purse. But this is sweet right here. I know, I know. Don't be jealous. I know you want one. What you're going to want that you're going to be able to get here very soon is this. What you're looking at is the hummingbird bit. Now what's that you say? What is exactly the hummingbird bit? This is a new product by Hummingbird by Bird Brain Technology. And what it's going to allow you to do to make life so much easier is the following. It's going to allow you to integrate the micro bit, one of my favorite devices that teach physical computing and coding and programming and all that great stuff that I love, it's near and dear to my heart, and easily bring it to the open source network of the Hummingbird kit. Many of you already have the Hummingbird. This is another product just like it, making life a little bit easier. It's cheaper, it's easier to gain access to, and it's gonna work so much smoother, especially because this works right in sync with make code. So what you do is you get your micro bit, your standard micro bit, and what we're going to do is we're going to dive right in here and let me get the camera so you get a little bit closer look. Less of the bald ugly guy and more of the amazing beautiful product. So here's a close up of the Hummingbird bit kit. You can see it looks just like the regular Hummingbird um, robot kit that you have if you already got one. We've got our tricolor ports right here. We've got our LEDs. You can get two tricolors. Here we can get three LEDs. We now have our servo ports right over here. And then down here are for our sensors. This is for our extension. And most importantly over here, this is for our micro bit. So I've got my micro bit right here. If you've never used one, it's an amazing, amazing product you need to check out. But if you've used it, um, it's really simple. Here's what you do. You take this side up here with all the different inputs. These are all different pins. If you haven't used micro bit, micro bit before, you can connect to all these little individual devices. Then this is going to allow us to read and do a lot of great things. And all it does, you got this little slot right in here. You just press it in and voila, we are ready to rock and roll. And so now we can jump into make code. We can code through micro bit through the make code app application now, and it's going to allow us to code the micro bit and the hummingbird compatible. And it's super easy to download and install. So here's what the back side looks like. And this right here, all you need then grab stuff out of my apron here again, is just a power cord, just like we've always used to connect and get our code. But the beauty of this now, having the micro bit, we can easily add the battery pack that we've used before when we've had to power up motors. But it really allows us to do a lot of different things here now. It allows us to take our micro bit and our hummingbird kits and we no longer have to be tethered. So before we dive into all that great stuff, let's jump into the code. Let's take a look at some basic products so you can kind of see how in the world the micro bit and the hummingbird bit work together to create awesome learning for everyone. All right, so eventually when this actually goes live and you're able to actually jump into the coding platform with Hummingbird deployed in the make code, when you go to makecode.com, it's going to take you to this site where we've already seen a lot of amazing things to code with Microbit and Circuit Playground and Minecraft and now LEGO EV3 and the Q Wonder Robots. And, and we're going to have an option down here for the Hummingbird kits. Um, for now, I have access, but it's not live for everybody yet. But what we're going to do is when it loads up, you will eventually have in your option these hummingbird blocks. They're going to allow you to do a variety of different things, just like we've done with the micro bit if you've used the micro bit before. Now, a couple things. We might as well close this out because this simulator of the micro bit will not work with the hummingbird blocks, at least at, of, of this time. So we're just going to close that out right here.
And what we're going to do is we're always going to have this here on the start. We're going to start the hummingbird. This just creates the, the connection to make sure that things are actually going to work. And the very first thing that we want to do is let's just get an LED light to work. And so you have probably done this kind of coding in Scratch or another platform before if you've used the Hummingbird kits. But now in MakeCode, we can do everything right here using the Microbit um, platform to make that work. So what we're going to do then is we're going to go here to Hummingbird. And we're going to drag over the Hummingbird LED. All right. And when we do that, we're going to drop this here. And we've got the choices of one, two, or three. We'll just keep it at one for now. And let's go 100% of, of brightness. We'll then go through and we're going to add a pause block, which is here in the basic. All right. And remember, this is in milliseconds. So let's just make this. Um, 2,000 milliseconds or two seconds. And then we're going to go back here to the hummingbird. We will swap this over and we'll make this at zero. And then we'll just have one more of these where we'll pause that. So we'll turn it on and off. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to go ahead and wire up the LED light and then we will run this program and see what it looks like. All right, so we're going to go ahead and download the code. There is a shortcut to this, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to name it LED for the time being. I'm going to go here. It's going to download into my, my folder down, down here. We'll open up the show in Finder. And then I just simply drag that over there to the micro bit. You're going to see that it's downloading here. And then we should have a blinking light on and off every two seconds. Boom. There it is. So that's what our code's doing. If I zoom back in here so you can see the screen. That's what we've got going on here. The Hummingbird LED at 100% for two seconds and then off for two seconds. And that, my friend, is what we've got rocking and rolling here with the LED. So that's our first simple way to code LED light. Very simple, very easy. So let's go ahead and jump into another activity so you can kind of see what else can be done using the micro bit. All right, so now let's just do one more thing. We, I'm going to move over my LED code right over here so you can see how that worked. And now let's do the try LED. So similar concept. We would drag this over. We pick our port. And then we can create all sorts of different colors. So I can make red 100, make green 20. Let's make blue 40. We can then add a pause block again, just for the sake of this demo. And then we could paste this down again, and we can make this another color. So let's make red zero, green 100, and blue. So the tri-color, as you know, if you worked with Hummingbird before, allows us to change color spectrum with the cables. So let's go ahead and plug our tri-LED in and see how this code works. All right, so I've got my Tri LED here. This is the Hummingbird kit that has the red and the green and the blue um, wires and then our ground. So we're gonna jump over here to our Tri Color. Let me go ahead and unplug this so you can see. Oops. So we're gonna go ahead and stick that right up here in the Tri Color. You can see the labels R for red G for green, B blue, and then the ground or the negative. So go ahead and just pop these cables in real quick. And then we got to see, we got blue up in there. Stick that bad boy in there. And then we got a little green action. Stick that in there. Finally, we got a red. So, got all those plugged in. So let's get our cable plugged in here. We got the power. And then, we'll do just like we did last time. I'll zoom this in so you can see. I won't show this every time, but just so you can see. We got our code right here. We're gonna download this LED. I'm gonna go and find her. And then I'm gonna drag it down to my micro bit. My micro bit's blinking, let me know that it's downloading. And if we have success, we should have our LED change colors. 
So it's probably a little hard to see. There we go. Off the palm of my hand, you can see it changing. So it's going real fast. So I need to look at my pause here. I think I'm missing my pause block. Yep, there it is. So let's, um, must have accidentally deleted that. So we'll go ahead and download this again. Show this in Finder. Drag this down. There we go, it's loading up here. There we go, green and red, back and forth. There we go, a little bit faster. So now we can see how we can diffuse that. So we can write different colors, have this thing flash a variety of ways. So a real easy way to code the Tri-LED. So what else can we do? All right, so now let's take a look at the servo. We've got two different types of servo. There are the rotational servos, and then there are the position servos. So let's take a look at the rotation servo. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over here to this hummingbird block, and we've got position and rotation. So I'm going to drag this rotation servo over. Um, let's just for the sake of the demo, let's just switch it over to port 2. All right, and then here, let's put the rotation server at... Let's go 35%. And then we're going to do a pause block just for the sake of easy demo. We're going to have that go that way for, uh, let's make it three seconds. So 3,000 milliseconds. And then we're going to go back in the opposite direction. So we're going to go at negative 35%. And then we will do that again for three seconds. So what this will do is it's going to move the servo and it power 35% and because it's rotational it's always continuously on so we're going to go from here in a positive direction for three seconds and then it's going to go back the opposite way counterclockwise at negative 35% for three seconds. So let's download this and then take a look at how this works. So before I plug this in, I just want to show you that there are two different types of servo motors. There's one with the R, which is rotational. And then you have another one that will be labeled with a B, which is our positional. These are the ones that, let me get this so it's not so blurry here for you. B, this is the um, position where we can only score it in from a 0 to 180 degrees and we'll talk about that in the next part. So we want the one, the R, for rotation, meaning that it's always continuously going to be spinning. And so I had programmed mine to be in port 2. So on my Hummingbird bit, here where the servos go, and you can see the ports are labeled 1, 2, 3, 4. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this in. Just like so. We can see up top, I know it's a little hard to see in the video here, but it's labeled S plus and negative. So your brown is your negative or your ground, the red is the positive, and the orange, sometimes it's yellow, is your signal. Um, that's what's going to control this, this motor. So when I go ahead and download this code here, and I want to make this, I make I think I made these 35, I was just stinking around with this. There we go. Let's download this program again. Now when we import it to our micro bit, what we should have see here when it loads is we should see this motor turn one direction and then go the other way. So there we go, 35% power for three seconds. And now it's going back that way. All right, so let's take a look at what I've got going on here, and we'll see if you can guess. Um, so we got a little bit of a glitch there. So if we have a glitch, what this will tell us is that, as you know, with the Hummingbird, we've got to have a battery pack. So this sometimes helps us as well. So I'm going to go ahead and plug this motor in here, and we'll see what happens here. There we go. I see we have much more success. 1,001, 1,002, 1,003. Boom. So you can see the different speeds. And the reason that is glitching, I mean, this is a common occurrence with a lot of people, is just the fact that we need power. So that's where that battery pack comes in quite handy. And so I have my battery pack plugged in, just like you would do with a regular Hummingbird kit. So some of you watching will probably be like, duh, bald guy, you should know that. 
and I did. But I wanted you to be able to see, because that's usually a common mistake that people make time and time again. So there is that. So let's just take a look at how we could control the position servo, and then we'll be all wrapped up. So you can see what I've done here. I've just now dropped in the other servo block where before we had the rotation servo. I've dropped in the position servo. We're in port one. I've plugged it into port one on the hummingbird bit. And we are moving it to the 90 degree position. We can go from zero to 180. And I'm gonna do that in one second. And then we're gonna move here to the 30 degree in one second. So when we go ahead and download this, this motor you will see move by position, by degrees as opposed to speed like we were doing with the rotational. So now what we'll get here, if you look at this servo, you can see it moving back and forth. Now, all right guys, so this is just a small sampling of what we can do with the micro bit and the hummingbird bit combined. When we bring this together, this is bringing together two fantastic product, products that can change the way we teach physical computing, computer science, coding, and programming for students. And so this is a great new addition. I'm super jazzed, and I look forward to sharing it with you my next project that I'm working on. I'm building out one. I hope to have it done soon so you can see the possibilities of what we can do with this device. Guys, let me know what you think, questions you have, things you want to know more about, and I would love to follow up with some more videos as you get ready to rock and roll and hopefully get your hands on this Hummingbird Bit Kit that's coming your way very soon. And I look forward to the project that people make, what my own learning is going to be, and just once again, helping kids take the ideas from their brain and bring it out to real life. All right, guys, I'm going to rock this apron for a while. And uh, in the meantime, i got to get back to work. So stay awesome, keep working, keep making, keep prototyping. And remember, the journey of learning is only as exciting as you make it. Take care.